How's it going, guys? My name is Zach with the Movie Castle, and today we're going to be taking a look at Godzilla the 70th Anniversary Special. This is a one shot put out by IDW that collects nine different short Godzilla comics, uh, all of which are 10 pages each. So it's a pretty thick comic, which is actually really cool. Uh, quite a bit to sink your teeth into here. Now, with a lot of anthology comics, it, it does share a lot of the similar tropes. You're bombarded with quite a whole lot, and it's kind of hard to take it all in. And of course, some stories will be way better than others. But I think, for the most part, the stories in here were all pretty good, and they did get a whole bunch of different art styles and different ideas across, and overall, it's a pretty fun book to go in and see a bunch of different Godzilla stories. Again, it is pretty thick, so there is a lot to take in here. And I would say, yeah, it's a fun little way to celebrate the 70th anniversary. I definitely recommend picking this one up. Um, I guess because there are so many different little things to talk about, let's go ahead and switch to the close-up camera. I'll do little mini reviews for each story. I'll be avoiding major spoilers, so I'll probably go pretty quick. But I'll show you guys a little bit of each story and a little bit of the art. So without further ado, let's switch to the close-up camera. Alright, here we are inside the castle taking a closer look at Godzilla the 70th Anniversary. Right off the bat, I do want to say I have the A cover for this, and I really do like it. The nice orange-green contrast, but also... It's Godzilla eating a train. How classic is that? Uh, we get the logo at the top, 70th anniversary, and we get IDW with the 25 years underneath it, and they actually brought their little light bulb back. A one-shot, and flip it to the back, and there's an ad, but there's the barcode 00111999. And yeah, 999 is uh, on the higher end, but bear in mind that this is 9 10 page stories I believe so I think this is 90 pages yeah I guess that's that's fair then anyway opening it up to the front we get the table of contents in the credits and we get to see that there's nine stories in here with this cool image of Godzilla behind them and yeah fun to see all this stuff anyway after this let's go into the stories proper I'm not going to do any major spoilers, but I do want to say my piece on a few plot points and do a little bit of analysis, but I will go a little bit quicker because we do have nine things to get through and they're all pretty short. Anyway, we open up with the first story, Half Century Boar, and we get Godzilla fighting Hedora, and we get these two guys below that are new recruits to the government's monster program. We find out that the people that are assigned with Godzilla get to go and roam the Earth, but because they're assigned to Hedorah, these guys have to stay there, and we get just, you know, years and years of them unable to be reassigned, and they just have to clean up all of Hedorah's toxic waste. I really do love the fun cartoony art style and all the nice colors with this one, but also the fact that it's kind of a comedy story of just how much the aftermath of these monsters can screw people over. I thought it was pretty fun. After that, much more dark art style with this story, Contagion, and we get to see this researcher at her computer, and she's running a bunch of simulations. And her boss comes up and says, we've already started putting your uh, research into practice, even though you didn't know about it. And turns out the disease gets into this monster, a giant mosquito, who is not only going to be a giant monster, but is also going to kill people with diseases. And we do get this page here where... A reporter named Martin Short, get it because the reporter in the first Godzilla was Steve Martin, uh, but he's like, the monster's coming, what a cruel act of nature, at least we have our government to protect us. Yeah, I'm sensing a bit of sarcasm there, but it does lead to a really fun ending and a fun little twist here, and cool to see Godzilla fighting this giant mosquito monster. After that, we get the story 
of gods and con men and we get to see this con man going in to meet a gangster basically he's selling monster stuff you know things left over from giant monster battles and he's a fraud so he's got some sea monkeys that he's trying to pass off as sort of monster uh, spores or something. I'm not quite sure. But the boss actually brought a scientist because he's spending a ton of money on this. So it's all a case of will he be found out or not? Well, the thing is, this is a Godzilla story. We are going to get an interruption from a giant monster battle. But this sort of talks about his perspective on things and how your perspective does change when you're actually dealing with the big stuff you're pretending to deal with. And overall, it's a fairly interesting little story from there. After that, we get the story entitled In the Shadows of a God, and we get this little girl, and I do like the cartoony art style and it, how it's essentially black, white, and red, but she's running in the remains of a city and we get to see that we got this sort of kind of poetic dialogue of what she's thinking in her head and after Godzilla almost gets her she goes into the footprint and sees a tiny little like baby monster character and she decides that not only is she going to make it out but she's also going to try to save this baby monster and yeah this is a really good thing for a nice short story. A different perspective, different art, this sort of poetic dialogue behind it. Yeah, it's really different and experimental and I think that's where shorts can really shine and I thought it was uh, pretty fun. And after that we get a story, Godzilla in the darkness, where you get this mother and she says, I still have to work, go to bed, by yourself and we get this creepy stairs the kid has to go up and when he goes up into the darkness he sees Godzilla in his bedroom destroying things and I think again uh, this is the perfect place for a story like this it really only should be about 10 pages but when we do short shorts we can be experimental, we can take risks, we can do things a little bit differently. Yeah, a whole book where Godzilla is just a figment in some kid's imagination, that may have been too much, but as a short little story, it's a fun aside and it's a fun different take on Godzilla, so uh, yeah, cool to see Godzilla and another creature is going to pop up and they're going to have a fun little dream battle in this kid's head. After that, we get the story the big one and we get to see Godzilla fighting this giant slug character and below are some people trying to make it out and here we do get to see Godzilla is like a metaphor for natural disasters and we get to talk about how this guy named Pop never wanted to abandon his store never wanted to abandon his community but now he kind of has to and you think okay they're just going to drive away well, it turns out there are little slugs as well. Almost becomes like a zombie movie with the way these slugs appear everywhere. And it does get quite desperate as they try to make it out and have a lot less time than they thought they did. I thought it was pretty fun and I do like the bright and colorful artwork here. That's pretty cool. Anyway, moving right along, we have the story Ant No Place for an Angel. And we get to see there's this town in the Wild West that only has women in it. I think they've, like, escaped bad situations. Now, we get to see that they're making a ton of graves, and I honestly don't know what's going on here. The town situation here is kind of vague. I mean, it takes you a moment to even realize that this is, in fact, the Wild West. Uh, but yeah, I think they're like mining for iron or something, but we get this guy, a new potential abuser, and he is, I think, following this monster, so does that mean it would have showed up anyway? I I'm not sure, but anyway, he shows up and causes a ruckus, and that's where we find out that this uh, village's protector is Mothra, complete with cowboy versions of the Mothra girls, and it will begin to fight the monster that the guy brings with him. This is an okay story. I did like the cowboy setting and, you know, that the girls put on cowboy hats when they're in the Wild West. But yeah, it is just kind of a weird story and it's, it's okay. 
after that, we get the story in summation, where we get to see that this guy was actually born during the original Godzilla attack, and that this attack killed his father, and that his father dying here would wind up shaping his life, and he would go to school to study monsters, and we get to see how things change throughout his life when Godzilla will show up and sometimes be a hero to the people, and he doesn't quite know how to take it, how to think of it, and this will eventually lead him to a point where he reevaluates what he thinks of Godzilla later in his life, and it really is an interesting character study to get to see the way this guy changes, and also we do just get some really cool kind of faded out art of Godzilla. I think it's a pretty interesting and deep story, and yeah, it does kind of really get to you. Anyway, the final story in here we have is Aftermath, and we get to see a woman standing amidst the rubble after a Godzilla attack, again going back to that whole Godzilla as a force of nature thing, and she'll get to meet a few people, this father who is in distress, not able to find his kid, and then this other guy who's like a teenager that's worried his parents will be upset at him that he broke his arm. But yeah, sort of the ragtag group of random survivors that have to team up and figure out what to do about Godzilla. And we get contrast them with this tech billionaire guy who is living in his big old house has no problems talking to his smart assistant, and we know that that's going to eventually come clashing with this group of people. It is kind of, you know, it, it we did get that one with the slugs earlier that does kind of do the natural disaster comparison, and where they bring in this tech CEO guy is a little on the nose, but I did like this group of survivors that they got going on here. But anyway, that's the last one in this book. We do get ads towards the end for like Godzilla Skate or Die, and then even Godzilla vs. the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 2, and apparently they're making a sequel to uh, Here There Be Dragons as well, so cool stuff. Overall, like I said, some of the stories are definitely better than others, but none of them in here are terrible, and some fun little ideas that I think, honestly, you know, like the kid dreaming about monsters, you know, that's that's perfect for a little anthology book like this. So overall, it's a fun collection of stories. The book is super thick, and I think, you know, why not go ahead and pick it up and get to see a whole bunch of Godzilla adventures in one place. I thought it was cool, and I would recommend it. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom. This should be my Godzilla playlist, where you can see my reviews for some of the new movies, also some of the comics as well. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.